Good afternoon, gentlemen. We have attorney at law, Mr. Kenny Kentish, and the man himself, Stewie Anthony Stewart. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Good afternoon, Sean. Good afternoon to your many listeners. <laughs> President, good afternoon to you, Sean, and good afternoon to the listeners of ZDK. Oh, boy. All over the world. Boy, Stewie, this is going to be fun. <laughs> <laughs> you want the great Kenny? Quiet <laughs> on. <laughs> anyway, as we move right along, gentlemen, uh, let's start with you, Mr. President. Um, not CCJ now. Give us a little bit of a background. I mean, the public has heard it a million times, but just briefly, uh, why you've taken the position that you've taken right now. Well, okay. Uh, thank you, Sean. L let me say, first of all, that from our perspective, we think that the CCJ is a great idea. I personally, as a lawyer trained in the region, as someone who's practicing in all the courts in Antigua and Barbuda, I fully endorse having the CCJ as our final court. Where I have a difficulty, a serious difficulty, is in the route that we are taking to get there. First of all, <clears throat> there, there are two problems from what I can see. First, if you are going into a referendum where you need to get 66% in order to succeed, you have to engage in a vigorous and sustained public education campaign. And by education, I mean not just talking about the CCJ, but talking about the court system in general. And w one of the interesting things that I've learned since speaking out on this issue, and I'm sure Mrs. Stewart will, will tell you the same thing, is that the public is very much unaware, even to this day, of how the legal system in Antigua works, what the court structure is like. They have no clue. But they have a keen interest in justice. They're interested in that. And that, comes to, that brings me to the second point I want to raise. I always say that my grandmother said to me when I was nine years old that you have to do the most good for the most people. Now, our Chief Justice, in a speech about a month ago, made this point, and she said, Justice is not calibrated to flow from the top going down, but from the bottom going up. When you look at court structures all over the world, the apex court, the highest court, will deal with the smallest number of cases. Less than 0 0.1, I could say. All right? Now, just to bring it home to Antigua, in 2016, in the high court, that's just one court, just the high court, there are about 2,500 cases filed. In that same year, in 2016, there were about 35 appeals filed in Antigua and Barbuda. So it would mean that if there were to be appeals to an apex court, it could be significantly less than 35. And so if it is that most of the cases being dealt with in the court system and being dealt with in the local courts, then you have to pay attention to what is happening in those courts. Now, here in Antigua, you have a situation where the industrial court and the magistrate's court are not accessible to persons with disabilities. The All Saints Magistrate's Court has no waiting area. Members of the public have to wait outside on a tree and be exposed to the heat and the rain. You have a situation in the industrial court where sometimes the court can't sit because the contracts of the, of the members have not been renewed for months. In parts of the Eastern Caribbean court, where, which is part of um, what Antigua belongs to, uh, we have a situation where the Chief Justice has pointed out that in some cases, appeals cannot be heard because the transcripts are not ready. Now, Sean, think about that carefully. If it is that you filed an appeal from the High Court to the Court of Appeal in a criminal case, and the transcript is not ready, and you cannot get your appeal heard, then, Sean, certainly, by the time a CCJ comes around, you're not going to have any appeal there, are you? So what we're saying is you're going to have to fix or at least demonstrate a willingness to do something about that situation. Now, most importantly, Sean, the regional governments, the Eastern Caribbean governments, owe our Supreme Court, 
High Court and Court of Appeal, 22 million EC dollars. Mm -hmm. That has a direct impact on the quality of justice which is dispensed in our courts. It has an effect on the number of judges that we have available to deal with matters. It has an effect on the equipment that is needed to ensure that cases are heard quickly. Now, for instance, you remember, Sean, that there was an injunction granted by the High Court restraining the continued construction of an airport in Barbuda. Your brother-in-law, Mr. Anthony Astafan, Senior Counsel, led the government's appeal on that matter, and there was an urgent appeal. And I can tell you, that appeal was heard with two judges of the Court of Appeal in St. Lucia, one in Tortola, Mr. Astafan in Antigua, and the lawyer for the, the, the applicants, he was in England. And the Chief Justice said this is a model that she would like to implement for more cases. But they just don't have the money. The court has to travel to all the islands. The Court of Appeal I'm referring to. They have to travel to each island by Liat. They have to pay Liat for that, and you know what Liat prices are like. They have to stay in a hotel. You know what that is like as well, Sean. That is a significant cost to the taxpayers of this country. Now, the significance of all of this is very simple. If it is that the courts are dependent on the governments, the Chief Justice has rightly recognized that one of the reasons that people have this fear or suspicion that the courts are beholden to the governments is because he who holds the purse is the one who calls the tune. So in order to remove that suspicion from the minds of the public, you need to, and I fully support this, create a trust fund for the Eastern Caribbean Supreme Court, just as they did for the CCJ. Now, my friend, Mr. Stewart, will be able to tell you more about that trust fund in the CCJ because there are problems with it. But the model, the model is a good one. And I think it will do us as a society here in Antigua more good if we implemented that model here in Antigua and Barbuda first. Do the most good for the most people. Mm -hmm. uh, Stewie, go ahead now. Yes, let, let me just start by saying that uh, our group, the CCJ Can Wait uh, group, was formed to echo and channel the voices of many persons out there who, in no uncertain terms, have indicated to us that the discussion uh, has been one-sided and they want to hear why the CCJ can wait. And they have really basically indicated to us many reasons. I will just let you know from a resident, in fact, a number of residents, I would, would add, in the Grace Green area, individuals who have indicated to me that they have served time in Her Majesty's prison, but they have no conviction. They have no criminal record. But because of the system of justice, in the lower tier of our justice system, they would have been on remand for three, four, two, number of years. And at the end of the day, the case might, have, might be dismissed, or they were found um, not guilty. But they have experience living in 1735. And these are the individuals who have said to us, you know, speak on our behalf. Hence the formation of the group CCJ Can Wait. And we believe that it is premature for Antigua and Barbuda at this time to transition away from the Privy Council to the uh, CCJ. I must add and echo our chairman's um, remarks when we say that we are not uh, speaking ill of the competencies of the justices of the court. We are not debating the preference of justice, whether white man justice, and we are not debating colonialism and things like that. I like that. We are dealing with the whole aspect of uh, justice. And when we talk about justice, 
we must speak to the whole aspect of money and funding of the court. And here's where we believe that the information coming from the other side has not been as accurate as it ought to be. Because at the end of the day, as we have said, we have no fundamental difference about the CCJ and I'm not going to the CCJ. So we want this education process to be one where the information is correct, accurate, so that the citizens of this country can make uh, their decision. We also uh, believe that, and the chairman spoke to it about the whole using the trust fund uh, approach to the law courts. But let us look at what we have been told by the president of the CCJ, by members of the National Coordinating Committee of the CCJ. They have been telling us, and it's also on the website of the CCJ, so persons can go on and, and Google this and look for themselves. And I'm quoting, they're saying the income from the CCJ Trust Fund will finance the expenditure of the court, remuneration of the judges and other employees, operational expenses of the court, etc., into perpetuity. This keeps the court from depending on the largesse of governments and keep it free from ad administrative control. End of quote. I want to say to the public of Antigua and Barbie and those listening uh, via the World Wide Web that this statement is inaccurate. This statement is not a true representation of what the CC's CCJ Trust Fund uh, will do. But before I get into the details and let persons know why the statement is inaccurate, I only um, believe it's fair that I give way to my, my colleague and let her voice be, be heard by the audience over there. And that is Ms. Spencer, attorney at law, is that right? That's correct. Good day, Sean. Good day, my dear. Thank you for having me. Go ahead. I'm actually happy to be here because I want to take the opportunity to speak directly to the comrades. I want to sta state from the beginning that you're no less a labor right if you come out and vote no on referendum day. This is a matter that's preserved for you by the Constitution to determine individually what you think is in the best interest of the nation. And it is not simply a matter for anyone to try to whip you into line. This is for you to determine. And there's also nothing stopping you from voting no on this day and at the next election voting the ABLP right back in, into office. This is a separate matter. So I wanted to put that out there right away. Okay. Uh, well, let's, let's, okay, let me, let, me, let me address some of these things. What I'm hearing from everything you're saying, CCJ, not now, uh, I believe we are educated enough to walk and chew gum. So if it is that, let's say, the government came into agreement with you all and started to maybe even putting to a couple of you on a committee to start to fix the court system, the local court system, because all the arguments I'm hearing so far has to do with access, right? Um, talking about transcripts, my understanding is that transcripts were outsourced from last week, I asked about the transcripts. They say it was outsourced, and had, uh, we owe 22 million, as Mr. Kentish has spoken, and so on. Um, let's start with you, Mr. Kentish. Is it fair to say that you'll be willing to sit down and say, look, on a committee or whatever from the government, look, we started to fix this thing because we believe that the CCJ as the apex court is the most appropriate at this time? Is that something fair to say, Mr. Kentish? Well, yes, but of course, a lot would depend on what this committee would be required to do. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to understand something. I began by saying that what should have been done mm -hmm. is a sustained public education campaign. Do you know, we, we actually had a constitutional review back in, I think it was 2000, and a report was done. Mm -hmm. That report up to now has not been circulated in the public of Antigua and Barbuda. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, in terms of just that basic issue of the Privy Council as a matter of constitutional review, no government, no administration has paid any attention to it until now. Mm -hmm. Now, we had two years ago the beginning of this public education campaign. Mm -hmm. But after the UPP took a particular position, 
the government abandoned the idea until very recently. Mm -hmm. During that period, when it was not in the front burner, there was absolutely no further public education taking place. And we don't think it's right to come to the public of Antigua and Barbuda three months before a referendum and say, well, okay, we're going to engage in public education now. That's, that, that's not right. So we think you would need to have sustained public education for about a year, perhaps, to sensitize the public and to educate the public, first of all, as to how the legal system works. Mm -hmm. How can we be going to the public to talk about the CCJ when many of them who approach us do not understand how either an apex system or apex court works or how the legal system works, Sean. Something is wrong there. There's a huge disconnect. So, but, but they had two, didn't they have two, I think I heard Tony say, they had two constitutional, two commissions in the 70s and 80s that recommended uh, the CCJ for the apex court. Am I correct, Kenny? Am yes, I correct? Yes, Sean. But Sean, what has happened with those commissions? Have you seen them? Have you read the reports? No, no, but let me ask, <laughs> let me, no, no, but well, just before we, we move on, no, I'm just trying to make a point here yeah. because what, what I'm understanding, all right, we're not against the CCJ, but what, what, what we are understanding, we want, because we are frustrated with what we have right now, and we need to fix this before we move on. But I am, I, you see, my difficulty is in seeing how the two are connected. Let me start with Ms. Spencer, Ms. Kenny, give her a chance. Uh, I'm not, I have difficulty. Maybe you can explain to the people what's the difficulty in uh, between the CCJ and the Privy Council. The Privy Council is way overseas. The CCJ is in our area. Why? Tell me, tell me what, what, it, what it is. I'm not sure what question you're asking. If you want the difficulties between the courts or the difficulty in terms of the link, why people are crying out to have the lower courts fixed first. I can address that issue first. Okay, go ahead. Um, lots of people, in terms of the issue, as if not now, when? Mm -hmm. A lot of people on the, on the pro side get very dismissive about that. Mm -hmm. They say, oh, if not now, just say you never want it. And that's actually not accurate. Mm -hmm. And additionally, some may say, okay, if not now, what, another 50 years? Mm -hmm. But I would, I, would, I would certainly hope it would not take that long. Mm -hmm. I think what we need to do is actually have around the table and set measurable goals that we would expect our government to implement within the soonest time frame. Yes. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. then we'd accede to it. So you're saying what w so what you're saying look we're asking for our local systems to be fixed we're not against the CCJ but we want our so you're taking uh, can I can I say this you're taking this opportunity now to vent to bring forward bring forward your position because there's been no educational si situations going on so if, let's say for instance we vote against the CCJ so the education process dead and we stick with the status quo isn't that so Mr. Kent? No sir. If I could just I thought I was there. Okay go ahead go ahead go ahead go ahead Ms. So Spencer. Sorry. Yes thank you. Uh -huh. You said something about taking the time now mm. and that is absolutely correct because this referendum is a rare moment of direct democracy. Mm -hmm. You know, usually we have the relic Westminster system that we still follow. First past the post, you vote, five years, you have to just hush your mouth and take it. This is a rare opportunity. Mm -hmm. And when next is the issue of access to justice and our entire court system mm -hmm. going to have the direct and national spotlight? Mm -hmm. Of course, now is the time to communicate with our government. So absolutely. But additionally, I would say it's also linked because it's rather disingenuous to say that we're doing this to increase access to justice. You'd have heard Mr. Kentish, I know Chief Justice, I mean, who else will we listen to if not the chief of our current court? They would have said that access to justice in this instance has to flow from the bottom up. And if I can just piggyback on some numbers Mr. Kentish raised about 2016, mm -hmm. it was actually 2,693 cases that were filed in the High Court then. Mm -hmm. And in that same time, it was actually 36 that reached to the Court of Appeal. Mm -hmm. And roughly, it's about 1%. And when you look at trends globally, generally, the figure that reaches to our apex court is less than what reaches to the Court of Appeal. That is where the bottleneck is. So if you're only having 1% getting to the Court of Appeal, we're actually doing excellent to have the same 1% going. And if I can take the math a bit further, even if we use the... 10% that you would have heard the president of the court, the Caribbean Court of Justice say is the average for apex appeals. Mm -hmm. Using the same figure from 2016 where we had 36 appeals, we're looking at her getting three, perhaps. So I think it's rather unfair to be mobilizing thousands of citizens to go out to vote to perhaps make a change for literally two people, perhaps, but while they, the thousands, are actually suffering in our lower courts. 
you see, I, I, I understand from the, this part. Stu, I'm going to get to you. you know, don't yes, worry. Yes, I know you, when I get you to my, you know, you don't like to come off. So let me just <laughs> deal with these two Go first. Ahead, okay. Uh, one, one of the things I'm getting, okay, we, fi we need to fix the lower courts because there's a bottleneck and there are things that need to be done. We owe 22 million. I'm just having difficulty in understanding what does that have to do with our apex court. The yeah. idea is you never asked for any education, et cetera, with the Privy Council, and it's more expensive to get there. So you're using this opportunity now. No, hold on. You're using this opportunity now. Whose responsibility does it become now to educate the public? So let's say we vote against the CCJ. Let's just say that. What happens after? What I'm hoping is that the public education will continue. That's the because point. You, you understand what I'm saying? Because I believe you're not going to get to 66% if you've taken an approach where you're going to have public education for three months. That doesn't make any sense to me. So we need something more aggressive and sustained to capture the people's attention and to actually impart knowledge. I understand right. you. Right. Now, mm -hmm. you, you, you don't seem to... Well, you keep saying that you don't understand the connection. Mm -mm, the, connection the connection is very simple, Sean. Mm -mm. Okay? A person who is in a job in Antigua today and gets fired <coughs> and has to go to the Industrial Court for Justice, mm -hmm. if the systems there are slow then it's going to take quite a while for him to get justice. So whether we have a the CCJ or the Privy Council as our apex court, the issue to that person is how quickly can he get his matter heard in that court. Mm -hmm. You can't get to the apex court unless you get to that court first. You know? mm -hmm. If you're a person charged with a crime and you're on remand, as Mr. Stewart said, four months, and then when you get to court, maybe eight months down the line or nine months down the line, the police say they're still not ready and the case is dismissed. What happens then? Or if you're convicted and you have to appeal and there's an issue with how quickly that appeal can be heard, what happens then, Sean? Mm -hmm. The right to appeal to a CCJ or Privy Council will be meaningless. No, I understand, you know, uh, Kenny, what, what you're saying. Mm -hmm. I'm just still not understanding why we can't walk and chew gum. I mean, I see your point in terms of we need to fix our system, and uh, I understand what you're saying. Because I, I assume what you're saying is that, look, our judges are competent, our lawyers are competent, so that's not the issue. Is that correct, That is sir? not, yes, that's not the issue for us. Right. Certainly not. Right. So what I'm saying, let me just go to Stewie. Stewie, I know you're nipping at the bit there. So tell me, uh, Stewie, isn't it fair to say that what we're using is this opportunity to not only educate the public, but to get our local systems fixed? Of course. And, and I'm saying because the majority of the, the persons utilize the, the local system or the, the law courts, then it's really an imperative that we get them fixed. And I believe you're, you're, you're hinting at the fact that this is a golden opportunity to have the government right mm -hmm. listen to the voices of the people mm -hmm. and i will agree to you okay because if i take the, the four countries that have already uh, acceded to the the uh ccj the ccj mm -hmm. the appellate jurisdiction mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. they didn't have in their constitution a referendum where they have to ask the person the people of their country the question mm -hmm. we have it here and you can sense in this country, and I'm not talking about the, um, the red and blue and the orange election, where persons are really and truly engaged, mm -hmm. and they're debating this issue, and they're asking the government, right? Look at the prison system, right? Look at the industrial court. Come and make the improvements, and the people are not asking for perfection. They're not saying to make them perfect. Persons are saying, put in the necessary improvements. And yes, we will, will go to CCJ thereafter. Because it means that the 90% the or the 95% of the individuals who will be affected by, by uh, the justice system at the law end, they now will feel that the government is listening to them. And I will tell the government, if they do that, if they hold back this referendum and put in place, as the Attorney General said in the new year, the, the construction of a new prison will commence. Is that mere just talk or all or, or, or the plans are there and, and they are, they are serious? If that's the case, let these things begin to happen. 
so that persons can really have confidence from the bottom up. And I've always heard uh, my, my chairperson here says that uh, the, the, the Chief Justice would often say that justice uh, starts from the bottom up, if I'm quoting correctly, where that persons below, like a pyramid system, the base. So we have to make sure that we listen to the, to, to the base. And it's a golden opportunity to government and ministers to listen. Sean, if I can just briefly, sure. just, ahead, just to hammer home the point of the link between the two, because I'm, I'm hearing you having difficulty. Great difficulty. But the link is to, the link between the lower courts and the apex court is the pathway to access to justice. It would obviously make more sense to clear the pathway first so you can get where you're going seamlessly. That's what we're trying to do. And I made the analogy in a different forum. I said it's a, it's a sort of a case where you have a two-story house and you want to go and paint over the roof. It looks fancy and nice on the top. But the people inside the house, they cannot even get there because the stairs are rotten, the support beams are corrosive, and the, you know, the walls are crumbling. Mm -hmm. It's a matter of access and clearing the pathway and doing things in the correct order. It's one thing to say you have your own court, and I get the feeling that some people think, oh, if you just clap the word Caribbean before or after something, you're duty-bound to support it. But you can still want the best interests of your nation, even though it has that name. Sean, uh, yeah, just one last point I want to make. Um, when we became independent in 1981, we didn't just move from being a colony one day to, to an independent nation. You know? We got associate statehood in 1967. And there were conditions we had to fulfill to get there. And I don't think this is very different. I'm not suggesting that we take that long period. Certainly not. But I think we can get to 66% if we have sustained public education. In other words, confidence building measures. You have to build the confidence of the public in the system in order to get them to come out and vote. See, that's another thing I want to address. Too. We're going to take a quick break, and we're coming right back. I understand where you're going, uh, lady and gentlemen. <laughs> Open forum here on Liberty Radio 97.1, and I have with me, uh, Miss Ladies First, Miss Spencer, uh, attorney at law, and uh, Mr. Stewart, a uh, financial man, and of course, Mr. Kenny Kentish, an attorney at law, and we're here talking about not CCJ now. Uh, CJ, sorry, CCJ can wait. My apologies. And uh, we're dealing with the whole issue. Now, Kenny, let's say, for instance, what you're speaking, what you're saying to the youngsters that are coming up. And gentlemen like yourself, I know, uh, possibly I expect to see you on the bench not too far from now, you know. And um, uh, isn't it a message that you're sending to people out there that you might be a little bit of a, might not be too clear at this point, so to speak. I don't know how to put it in the right way. Uh, in the sense that you're saying that, look, we should have more confidence in the Privy Council than our own people who aspire to be on the bench, because I know you'll be on the bench pretty soon. Go ahead, sir. Well, I certainly didn't hear Mr. Kentish say Not a whole lot, Mr. Spencer. I'm not talking like to you. I'm <laughs> not talking to me, talk to my partner. <laughs> okay, you stay out of this one. Go ahead, Kenny. Sean, it's not about preference mm. or competence of the judicial personalities. Mm -hmm. It is about how our leaders mm -hmm. deal with the resources available to this small island developing state. Mm -hmm. Our contribution to the Eastern Caribbean Supreme Court is less than 3% of our annual budget. Mm -hmm. The issue of justice has never been an issue in any of the elections that certainly that I've witnessed since age 16. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. And the referendum suddenly brought to the fore certain issues that mm -hmm. people had and felt obligated to speak up about. Mm -hmm. And that's why we are together, and that's why we're saying to the public and to the government, we need to take a serious, long, hard look at this. I'm not trying to tell people that we should not aspire to have our own judges sitting on our apex court. I have already endorsed the idea, and I have already said that I think that that is the way, the way we should be going. Mm -hmm. What I question is the current route and plan to get there. Mm -hmm. That's what we question. Okay. Uh, Stewie, let's deal with the finances. And by the way, you can start calling 462-1100 will be the number you mm -hmm. call, 462-1100. Stewie, let's talk about the finances. You made reference to the finances, and you spoke about the fact that, um, you know, that there, there could be some problems with how the trust fund is set up. Please explain. Yes, uh, 
Well, I must say I was fortunate to attend a meeting on the 26th of September mm -hmm. with Dr. Linton Lewis, the chairperson of the CC CCJ Trust Fund. Mm -hmm. And that meeting, we really got an opportunity to ask questions. And I was, I learned there that the present balance of the CCJ uh, Trust Fund is just over 80 uh, million dollars, mm -hmm. right? It, it simply means that the trust fund, the principal balance would have been depleted by almost 20 million dollars. The amount of expenditure over the 13 year period, according to the uh, chairperson, Mr. Lewis, and uh, sorry, Dr. Lewis, and also the information gleaned from the CCJ website, the financials. 90 million US dollars would have been spent. 77 million towards court expenditure and 13 million towards administration of the uh, CCJ trust fund. Now, I want to take an opportunity to look into the, the, the future to do some uh, projections and to show that the trust fund will need a uh, topping up. In fact, Dr. Lewis told the meeting that the uh, committee that, that runs the, the trust fund would have made recommendation to the governments immediately after the trust fund came into being that they wanted injections, top up, additional monies, every five years because right there they realize that the 100 million would not be enough in fact the income from the 100 million would not be enough to run the the the, the court system into perpetuity as it be as is being said uh, uh falsely i i should say or inaccurately by persons supporting the ccj so if we look at what will happen shortly we have two jurisdictions to be added and in fact you know others percolating so let's say we add four jurisdiction to the to the appellate section of the ccg taking it from four to eight with this the ccj trust fund right now presently we have uh an annual return again, supported by em empirical evidence, of about 5%. Mm -hmm. That's about uh, 5 million, 4 million, mm -hmm. thereabout. Mm -hmm. The court ex expenditure, the court cost, right now, is about $7 million. Mm -hmm. So right now... $7 million per year? Per year, per mm -hmm. annum. I'm talking mm -hmm. annual figures. Now, the, you can see that we're on the water. But let's say we add the additional four jurisdictions. And let's say we have the three justices added because we only have seven now. And, and the, the, the CG, CCJ arrangement makes recommendation or makes provision for ten justices. The financials on the website show that they added, when they added Dominica recently, about ten new staff. We also have retired justices, five, two presidents and three uh, judges. And they received the same remuneration as, they were sit as when they were sitting on the bench. So the, 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 the expenditure for the court, conservatively, will move from 7 million to 14 million if we add four uh, jurisdictions. Not all, you know, just four. So we'll, we, we'll be servicing, the court will be servicing eight uh, jurisdictions in the appellate section. It simply means that the expenditure to run the court and to administer the fund will move from seven million annually to fourteen million annually. And just to, for for ease of calculation, let's see that the income stays at about four million annually. And we know that it will be really it will be less because the principal will be going down. And the income from the fund will be going down. But for ease of calculation, let's say $4 million annually. There's a difference there of $10 million. 
All right, hold on, we'll take a call. Good afternoon. Hi, Sean. Hi. <laughs> this is me. Cut him Today, off. Mr. Astafan. Cut, Cut him, him off now. <laughs> you know, it's like if people say... Sean, Hi. <laughs> I, I really don't have a question, but I, I have to express some of my concerns as I tried to do last night. Um, last night, Mr. Kentish was on with our learned friend, Mr. Simon. And I mentioned the numerous commissions of commissions reports. It's more than two. It's about five or six. When you add St. Lucia, um, Antigua, it's probably seven or eight. And they made the valid point that well, nobody knows about them. That's a very that's a very valid point because I think until I raised them, nobody really heard. Um, Justin Simon said the same thing and agreed with Kenny Kentish. But my point was. The reason why I called was that certainly if government hasn't done it, then the Bar Association, the senior lawyers, the, the Queen's Council and senior councils like myself have an obligation to inform the people of this country, especially the Bar Association, of these various reports that exist and the extraordinary document prepared by U, um, U. Rollins, now Sir U. Rollins, on the pros and cons of the CCJ, because unless we do that, um, many people will not know that the debate taking place is not a new one. It's an old, tired debate of over 30-something years old. And the crowning historical point in time was the West India Commission in 1992 that considered every single issue now being raised, but let's say now, not necessarily today, but over the, the, the period of time. And, 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 and it may be that if there's a feeling, it's a feeling in, in, in getting the information out that exists on the issue of the CCG. But I'll tell you what my greater, prob my greater concerns are, Sean, having listened to, 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 to today again. This referendum should be about the CCJ. I think the yes side and the no side have an obligation to inform the people of this country how the CCJ is structured, how the trust fund works, how the, the, the judicial appointment of the judges and the presidents work, because these are embodied in legislation and agreements that are there available to all of us and those of us who are lawyers to explain. And I think we need to give a comparison between the Judicial Committee of the Privy Council and the CCJ so people will understand if there's a contrast, if there's not a contrast, and the, the benefits of moving towards the CCJ. Instead, Sean, we are spending a considerable amount of time and energy, especially some of my dear friends who, who, who have really... Um, difficult schedules in their practices, Ex finding or uh, explaining every conceivable reason under the sun as to why people should not go to the CCJ without actually discussing what the CCJ is. And the reason that's of concern to me is that the issues exist now, the difficulties exist now and have existed for the last hundred years with the Judicial Committee of the Privy Council. So the, the local conditions cannot be a beneficial signal or, 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 or attribute of, of our mm. continued um, uh, attachment to, to, to the Privy Council. The, the, the problems have existed and they continue to exist and they will continue to exist, no doubt, not to the extent that I've heard, because I don't necessarily agree with everything that I have heard under the CCJ. And I think it's wrong. That's just my personal view. I'm sorry to have to share it now. I think it's very wrong to hold the CCJ debate hostage to things that have no relevance either to the CCJ or to the Privy Council. But everybody does have the right to speak, and everything that was said today, I respect the right of everyone, including my friend Kenny Ken, my brother <laughs> Kenny Ken, is for what he's saying. But we just have a fundamental disagreement a disagreement on the discussion. I'm not questioning their right to say it. I'm just saying that the, 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 the no and the yes debate should perhaps refocus on what the central issue is, which is the Caribbean Court of Justice. Th uh, thanks a lot, John. Uh, I have Sean, to run. Go ahead, Miss Spencer. Go ahead. Sorry. Mm. Um, 
is Mr. Astafel in the building, perchance? Because no, I no, he's not here. Okay, I notice mm. if once you say CC before you can reach the J, he's on the air with mm. us, <laughs> no matter where you are. Mm. But if I can just address um, a few things he said very mm. quickly. One, I want to say respectfully that I think it's quite myopic to say it should just be CCJ yes or Privy Council no. Whenever you're making decisions, particularly when you have to vote, there are lots of considerations that are involved. Even day-to-day -day decisions. Should I have a hamburger now? Will I go to the gym after? Will I be too tired if I eat it? Can I afford to get so-and-so after? There are lots of considerations that are involved. And this is no different with, with this decision that is so crucial to our nation. Now is the time for you to communicate to our government, and we would hope that we'd actually be heard and we can work together hereafter. Uh, can you go? Oh. Yeah, yeah, just one comment, Sean. Mm. <clears throat> While well, I hear my, my brother and friend, Tony Asifan, I, I think he's missing the point. He's, you see, we can't refocus, as he suggests, on whether it's CCJ or, or Privy Council. No. The point is, the government and all of us dropped the ball because, as I said, there's been no public education going on for two years. So that's why the public doesn't even know much about what the CCJ is, even though when you talk to the National Coordinating Committee members, when they go out on their house to house, a lot of people still don't know what the CCJ represents. I spoke to someone yesterday who barely knew that there was going to be a referendum on November 6th. Precisely. And these are the same people we're expecting to mobilize and come out to exactly. without this knowledge. Uh, um, you know, guys, I, I hear what you're saying, and I understand where you're coming from with regards to education. But what guarantee do we have that once this is over, that there'll be a public education going on, so we'll go back to the status quo? No, but Sean, but I can tell you uh -huh. that we will be continuing our public education. If, right. the, if, the if, 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 the, if, if the yes vote does not succeed, right, mm -hmm. we will be continuing our campaign right. to educate the people mm -hmm. about the CCJ and the legal system that, that that's going to go on but additionally sean are you suggesting that our government would hear our plight get a no and then just and, continue and to ignore us as mr asifan said these problems exist and will continue to exist but will the government step step in to assist us that's what we're hoping will be the case no I and just the people that are voting yes i'm wondering i mean do they just not care about the poor and ordinary people the thousands that are suffering through the lower courts and these are the lucky ones that can actually make it there. Do we not care about them? Who's going to stand up for them and fight for them and when? Ms. Spencer, to be quite honest, you know, I understand and I, I see the... But from what I'm hearing, we're talking about access and fixing the law system, which needs to be addressed. And I hear that, but I am still not understanding why we can't walk and chew gum. And I say that respectfully to the, to the panel that's here because of the fact that what you're saying is that should we decide to say no... What guarantee do we have going forward? I hear Mr. My, my good friend Kenny speaking about the fact that you're going to continue with the education system. Absolutely. But if it stays, but we're, we're, we're talking about, so what you're saying is that we're satisfied with the status quo. So then what happens after that? It now becomes a political decision because those that are in power now will say, look, we've done this. We have other priorities now. We've given it our best shot. We will have put aside, obviously, they'll scale down the education system because they have more pressing priorities, and we move on to the next time. Is that not so, Stuart? Yeah, Sean, You're the Sean we need to have a referendum mean? last year, right? And yes. Having and they haven't one. Know. I haven't won no. All right. Well, let's see. Stuart, okay. go ahead. Y yes, but, but if I could just finish off the point on, on the finances, <coughs> because the point I was making there, with, with that extra $10 million, um, and more annually, the trust fund will be depleted rapidly quickly mm -hmm. in in a few years mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. so it means then that our governments will have to go back to the people for monies mm -hmm. and our chief justice just told us that 22 million ec dollars right is outstanding mm -hmm. and unpaid mm -hmm. for the man in the street out there i want to let them know in addition so the, 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 the financing of the court going to be a problem soon where the governments will be calling upon you to contribute more in tax dollars to fund this court, right? In addition to that, I see the elephant in the room and I got some answers um, Saturday night because we were in pickets, you know, educating the people that the legal fees 
and I'm not talking about the, the actual code fees mm -hmm. because right now, because you asked a question earlier about the expense of the CCJ via the, the Privy Council, mm -hmm. they're coming down and par right now oh, you based upon what, I, what I'm learning. Oh, in the, hold, hold on, hold Come on. Come on, Hold on, hold not on. Possible. Hold on. Sean, what, um, try and get some knowledge in your head. Right? No, Kenny. Try and get some Kenny, knowledge no, in your head today. Kenny, 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 no, 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 no. Try that. Let me finish the point. Let me finish the point. Right? Maybe with some little differences in, in the actual All court right. filing fees, okay. small right. differences, mm -hmm. but with the legal fees, I learned because I've been asking that the legal fees are set by the bar association mm -hmm. for the lawyers mm -hmm. to take a, a case to the privy council that mm -hmm. apex court mm -hmm. or to the CCJ, right? It is the same thing. So, so hold on, slow down, slow down, Mr. Oh. Can your lawyer, Spencer, so are you saying that the same cost... No, Stuart, I'm going to let you continue. Yes. Are you saying to me that it's the same cost for the CCJ has to go to the Privy Council, the two lawyers here? It's no the Apex Court. It doesn't matter yeah. which court you're going to. The no. professional fees for the lawyer will be the same. The no professional fees will be the same. Yeah, yes. no matter mm. If you want a Queen's Council, wherever you're taking the Queen's Council, you have to pay Queen's Council fees. You can't avoid that. So let's say EC, so what are you saying? The EC and the Pound are the same? No, 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 Sean. No, these no, are no, no, QCs no, no. For, for Antigua. If you're choosing an Antiguan lawyer. Uh -huh. If you want a Queen's Council But No, 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 but I'm trying to get. You're saying it's the same. So let's say, okay, we have an Antiguan. Am I correct, Kenny? When we go, oh, Miss Spencer, you're going to the United Kingdom, and you have to get also a lawyer, then a solicitor. You Am I correct? No, sir. No, no sir. sir. No, Sean. So, so and additionally, you pay your Queen's Council, if you choose one, for Antigua in local mm -hmm. fees. You don't automatically just suddenly pay them in but pounds. Who, so then who will, be, who will you be working with in the United Sean, Kingdom? Sean, let, Sean, let me explain. Go ahead. Let me explain, Sean. Okay. One of the good things about this, or, or the advent of the CCJ, is that the Privy Council has been responsive to the ah. concerns. Okay? So, so, a couple of things have happened. Okay. You can now stay here in Antigua uh -huh. and file your documents electronically. Okay. okay? That's the first thing. Okay. Secondly, that, well, that means, therefore, you don't have to hire a lawyer in, in England to file documents on your behalf. Right. That would cost about 5,000 pounds. Right. So that cost is now eliminated. Right. Okay. Secondly, you can request of the Privy Council that you want to have an electronic hearing rather than travel to England. Oh, okay. And they will do that. All right. I heard about okay? that. Okay. Right. So th that, that is why I'm saying the, 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 the cost barrier that once existed mm -hmm. does not exist anymore. One second. Let me take Not in 2018. Part. Good afternoon. Oops. We lost that. Go ahead. Go ahead, Kenny. Yeah, I'm just saying that the cost barrier that existed before does not exist now. So what caused, what prompted the Privy Council to now act? Well, one, one of them is that they've had a change in leadership. One, one, one call. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Hey. Sean. Hi. Then change because I have a coat to do them. <laughs> that wasn't do. Then change because I have a coat to do them. <laughs> All the time, we do them for 30 years. Uh -huh. For all the years them do so, what they do for our foot in the Caribbean? Nothing. Nah, nah. Mm -hmm. They don't do nothing. And when it comes to black people, and black people can lead, black people are bring them down. Mm -hmm. Our own black people. As I was talking about something, oh yeah, no. Then they can see, then they can, they, 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 they can cover up the patch, they can cover up them, they all kind of stuff. Just for the move for the white man's court. The boy tell me, how for defend myself. Mm -hmm. We say a time for how we rule ourselves, a time for how we can control our own destiny, mm -hmm. a time for how we are. But you come to tell me, it's no, at the same thing happened in the court of them, but none and never talk about the court, the lie upon them, they all cheer them, never talk about the court all the time, but all you ever see is the Caribbean court, yeah, kind of stuff. The two parties, two governments, Labour Party and the UPB, sign over everything. No UPP against them. And the UPP supporters are against them too. So that one of the one them one and the DNA too. No DNA might can't win a government in this country so they can't say can't <laughs> All right. let, me, let me let me let me get some more calls and I let the guys so go back. Let me just that. respond on All right, go ahead. That, that, then the UPP can win in this government, so then the one way to put the foot to two food and time. Not no wait which time tell the lie, with a lie guy named there. Which one? The, the, the one over the sub. Kenny. Kenny, what time you want our uh, put put them off for that our can wait? And two years, three years, four years. They said, tell me, baby, this. Who must be a good thing? 
at the time that I was put off that, that I can speak the, the, um, the court in the Caribbean. And what makes the, 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 the court in England, the sister way, to fix the court in England to do Okay? That's uh, what we want to understand with our woman. All right, go ahead. I think, go ahead. Fool. Fool. Fool, my Joe. That was for Mr. Kent. That was for me. But Mr. if Kent. I can just um, yeah, go ahead, touch on the race issue. I mean, it's quite unfortunate, I think, that people seem to be making this decision based on race, which I think tends to blind reason. Mm. But if I, if I can just put it in perspective for them, people are saying, oh, it's time to wash your hands from the white man and his colonialism. Mm. But we're moving from a position where we're having these, okay, yes, white justices of a very great and august institution dispensing justice for us for free. We're moving instead to a position we, where we have two of the same members on our own court that we're actually paying for. So, I mean, if we're just using the race issue, it doesn't really conform or make any sense to rely upon that. Uh, Kenny? What Nelisa said. I'm tired of talking about it. I'm really disgusted. Every time I hear somebody bring up race. And when I say it's free, I actually really want to I really want to stress that because while it does have a cause for individual litigants mm. to go to the Privy Council, our government has absolutely zero responsibility for maintaining the court, paying the judges, nothing to do with the court. It is a free ride we're having that we have inherited from uh, a very august institution. And to move from that because of race to go and still pay out of pocket the same race simply makes no sense to me. That's why I think the race is really needs to just be killed at this point and think about the people here of your own race that are suffering. Good afternoon. Hello? Good afternoon, Sean. Hi. Are you on your panel? Yes. Sean, mm. I think some of these people who are conducting there on the Privy Council, mm. um, I think they're more than something than that is that if they can't convince, consume. Mm -hmm. From some of the arguments I'm hearing from them. Okay. Um, I hear a good friend who says it's going to cost the same thing. To go to the um, CCJ, mm -hmm. it will become our final appellate court as the same to go to the Privy Council. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. I, I'm noticing that he doesn't do question and answer too well. He asks the question whenever you ask him a question. He asks back a question, you don't give an answer. You mm -hmm. ask him, if it's going to cost the same. So you go into the Caribbean, which so, is $80 mm -hmm. or US, whatever you want to quote, it's going to cost the same thing going up in pounds. We know you have that yet. We need answer yet. But you dance to dance to dance. I'm saying I'm going to vote CCJ as a result of I'm going to think about my grandchildren, my children's future, just in case they don't want to get in to law, magistrate, judge, etc. So they can serve as the highest, highest position in adjudication in the Caribbean. Don't tell me about corruption and all this foolishness because you know what you're telling me? Kids who are not born. I will be born home to you going down the line if we get the CCJ. They are oh, corrupt because they don't they know people already the card. The body of the England come up. Eh? Sean, it's time for us to get in this myopic mind, mindset that we have. And I'm saying to our people in Antigua, into the Caribbean, who are going out with Grenada, hey, CCJ, it's time for us to control our own destiny. And hey, when it comes to expense, just like anything else, we have to continue. Thank you. All right, take care. Uh, I'm gonna, we're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back. Uh, welcome back to Open Forum here on Liberty Radio 97.1. Uh, uh, Stewie, uh, now let me ask you, Stewie, um, uh, rather than going towards the two attorneys, we're saying that right now you have uh, the Privy Council that has now decided that they can do courses, uh, sorry, they can hear court via uh, electronic electronically. And so that has brought down the cost. Okay. Is that in you? Would you, from your standpoint, and not the lawyers, from your standpoint, would this be something that you would say uh, may have strengthened the argument against the CCJ? Or are you saying that um, the C you're saying the CCJ can wait? But it's strengthening the argument against the, uh, the CCJ more for the Privy Council. Therefore, that is the reason why we can wait from your standpoint. Well, basically, it, it, it has... Um debunk or erase one of the arguments that was being made in mm -hmm. favor of, mm -hmm. of the CCJ. Mm -hmm. And um, as the, the caller uh, just mentioned about the, the currency, mm -hmm. the two lawyers here were very clear 
in that um, the bar association set the fees and the fees are set in EC dollars mm -hmm. and e when they go to um, the UK they, they're paid in EC dollars mm -hmm. right so so access getting access to justice mm -hmm. and getting it in in technology uh, that that provides ease of access is is ab absolutely um, very good but again as as we have said earlier right mm -hmm. is that the argument of course is something that we believe the other side you know should have come and just put everything on the table because we we're, we're getting and, and, and if we here getting the, the information in bits and pieces it means that the people out there the, most of them believe when they say because you remember the president uh, saunders told us that you have paid for your quote already is that, that is not correct we have paid 2.9 million dollars but from the analysis i showed you right mm -hmm. monies will have to be paid pensioners oh they may may be wondering and that's why people are saying you know ccj can wait until they get the back pay or something like that although it might not have a direct um, um connection at this time but if they delay the back pay it might be so 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 <laughs> oh that's a little shot there. No, no. <laughs> so <laughs> right because you, that's what i'm saying they, they wouldn't be able to have the, the monies to pay to to access um the, the the justice so so yes if the the privy council can provide justice right and make it accessible just as the ccj it, of course is an argument of of let's say of balance and what we are saying we are not saying that look never go to the ccj right mm -hmm. so we are happy that the privy council w would be doing things to make sure that the cost is reduced for 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 persons or the one percent of individuals who would go but we want the government to pick up the the, the mantle and improve the, the system the low cost improve the industrial um, court system improve the prison improve the whole aspect of justice and do it so that persons will feel comfortable going and making the x and say yes we are voting for to put on the roof as my, 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 my sister here, Miss Spencer, said, to put on that roof on that house, knowing that the foundation and the wall of justice is so sound that with the, with the apex court coming now, everything will just be moving so smooth that we, we will be maybe saying um, amen, hallelujah. Let's take justice a few calls. I see these calls, both lines buzzing away. Good afternoon. Hey, good afternoon, Sean. Ah, oh, my good partner, Georgie. Long <laughs> time I don't hear from you, man. So you throw me away. No, no, I listen with some dumb question I have answered. You know. <laughs> okay, Georgie. Well, and good afternoon to your partner, right? Yeah. So, the dumb question I have to Oh, you with this dumb partner. thing. We afraid you when you come with this dumb thing. Listen now. to <laughs> me. <laughs> the dumb question. Any one of your partner could answer this question. Uh -huh. I want to find out if any black man ever sat, sit, sat on the privy council to give a ruling. Mm -hmm. That's a question that I want to answer. It's a dumb question, but at the same time, I would like to hear if any black man, mm -hmm. person, whoever, mm -hmm. sat, sit on the privy council to make and give judgment. All right. Thank thanks, you. Thanks a lot. Has there ever been a... The answer is yes, Sean. Okay. More than once. Okay, the answer is yes, more than once. And Go also on. that there are white persons on the court, Caribbean Court of Justice in any event. As I said, the race issue should be squashed. All right, uh, we're moving right along. Uh, in the minutes that we... Uh, oh, let me go to the <laughs> Good afternoon. Hello? Hi. How are you doing, sir? Good, sir. Listening to the conversation. Hi, Biggie. What's up? I'm here. Everything good? Yeah. All right. I, I, I just... just I want to make a comment to the, the politician we have it. Okay. Because any, any politician who is going to tell me that I have to hold back, hold on to my past, mm -hmm. they can never lead me into the future. I, I, you know how I feel about, about us, Sean, and you know my take on this. And the other thing I want to say, that history has taught us that when slavery was abolished, there were, there were a few who went back to the master of the real slavery. Mm -hmm. Good afternoon, Sean. All right. Thank you very much. 
Uh, gentlemen, uh, lady and gentlemen, as we move forward, I, I would suggest, can I suggest something to you all? Let's say the, let's say uh, the government of Antigua and Barbuda, Mr. Benjamin came and he says, look, we, are, we have heard your cry and we are now demonstrating a willingness to fix the lower courts. I, I think I, the word has been spoken about the prison system <coughs> and they're putting a committee together. I said it referred to it earlier and they say, look, you know, we want y'all to sit in this and help us. We're calling the Bar Association, calling uh, a couple of you guys and sit down. Is that something that would uh, appease you or to say, look, all right, we're going forward with this? That would certainly be a start, Sean, mm -hmm. and I would certainly love to be a part of any such, mm -hmm. you know, steps to develop and improve our system. However, at the same time, I'm not sure if perhaps that would be enough at this stage. Why? Because it is, it's a matter of, you know, proof being in the pudding. And mm -hmm. you mentioned something as well earlier about after the referendum. Mm -hmm. What happens, like, if the government just says, okay, they're putting this to the back burner? And I would say certainly I'll be sorely disappointed myself. I'll be sorely disappointed in my government if they were to just simply relegate this to the back burner if the vote is not how they intend it to be. I would, I would assume and hope that they would put it as a matter of priority and take the necessary steps to show that they actually were serious about improving access to justice. Otherwise, I might have to arrive at the unpleasant conclusion that it was just simply a farce. If you're committed to improving justice, no matter what the vote is, you take steps to achieve that. Uh, Sean, yes, let, sir, me, let me say something else, mm -hmm. too. I think since becoming Prime Minister, uh, Gaston Brown has shown on, 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 on more than one occasion uh, capacity for leadership. Not just in Antigua, but on a regional level. And I think it would be a great testament to his leadership skills if he were to say, I am going to my colleague heads of government in the Eastern Caribbean, and we are going to create this trust fund. I'm going to take the lead on this issue. That's what I would like to see Gaston Brown do. That's what I would like to see. I don't think it's fair to either the CCJ or the public to be simply saying, okay, well, we've had the public education for three, three months, and we're going into a referendum on this issue. And, you know, all the other issues that the public wants to raise don't matter. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's the route we should be going. Sure. And I, I think we're going to have a problem.